All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you with my long overdue January 2016 update video for, you guessed it, January 2016. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal stuff as well as YouTube-y stuff. But um, before we begin all that, um, I do wanna apologize for the, uh, the lack of videos as of late. Um, I've been busy moving, if you couldn't tell I'm at my new digs here in uh, Portage, Michigan. I just started my uh, first semester of college in nearly 10 years, so nearly a decade. Um, and I just started last week, so I've been busy with that, going to uh, Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, just a couple miles away. And so a lot of changes, and I just got uh, internet connectivity in the apartment uh, yesterday. So since then I've been very busy uploading videos and stuff like that and I'm actually uploading a whole bunch of them right now. So um, yeah, but we'll get into that here in a bit. So um, and in this month's video, the, uh, the personal life stuff and the YouTube stuff kind of intermingle a little bit. So it's not gonna be as clear cut as in most of my uh, monthly update videos. So um, apologies for that in advance. <laughs> But anyway, let's begin. So let's start off with some uh, YouTube -y stuff. And I already pretty much covered the bases as far as like why I haven't been making as many videos as of late. So, you know, moving on from that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, I have two major announcements for not only this month, for, but for this year, as far as a new direction for the Andy Sun. So, um, and I've already kind of touched on these in previous update videos, but I just want to reiterate it in this video just so you guys, you know, know <laughs> about it. So you're not kind of blindsided about, oh, what's going on? <laughs> so, um, one of the main changes that's going to be happening this year is I'm going to be, um, moving my channel. So I'm going to be moving my main channel to my former secondary channel. So instead of, you know, youtube.com slash andysan, which is what you're watching this video on right now, I'm gonna be moving my channel over to youtube.com slash theandysan. And I'll be sure to put uh, links and stuff down below in the uh, description, in the boobity boops. So that way you guys can check it out, subscribe, so you can just set it and forget it, <laughs> pretty much. But, um, yeah, so one of the reasons, actually I have two main reasons, you know, uh, for, uh, the move and uh, one of the reasons is for branding consistency now I know that on YouTube I'm known as Andy San but for a lot of my other uh, social media outlets and stuff like that I'm the Andy San so it's kind of a, a weird little anomaly and it didn't always used to be that way but just because a lot of people found the name and picked it up before I did it was just like shit <laughs> so I had to go with the Andy San so um, I think just for branding consistency, you know, moving over to, you know, my The Andy San channel, it'll just streamline everything, you know, and people won't get confused, you know, which Andy San is it? I don't, I don't know, man. Andy Space San, San, I don't And also, uh, <laughs> as anybody who has tried uh, searching for my videos uh, under the name Andy San can attest to, um, it, it can come up with a lot of uh, unsavory uh, search results, you know, depending on who you are, of course. Um, so, as you know, you guys have found out, um, the porn star Andy Sandimas appears in a lot of my search results if you're trying to search for my Andy San channel. So, um, depending on you know who you are and your taste for adult content and stuff like that, uh, you may not find that favorable. And uh, if you're if you're one of my younger viewers, you know if you try searching, where's Andy San? And you see friggin' porn star with her legs spread open and stuff like that. You know, you know, mommy and daddy may not take too kindly to that. So um, I decided to switch over to the Andy San, where a lot more of my videos show up more consistently as opposed to other people. So that's one of the reasons. And uh, Probably the main reason, second reason, is that I've got my AdSense account activated for that channel finally. So it's been approved and stuff like that. And I've already started monetizing some of the videos. Not all, but some. And um, so I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about the whole monetization thing. Because, you know, talking, you know, YouTube money is kind of a, a dirty word on YouTube because, you know, it, it's very 
you know, invocative of uh, selling out and, you know, just doing it for the views or doing it for the money or something like that. But the reality of it, at least in my case, is this. So I'm no longer in the U United States Navy, veteran, which, I mean, that's cool and all, but the reality is that I'm not making the money that I used to. So, you know, when I was in the Navy, I had a whole lot of disposable income. And granted, I saved a whole bunch of it. I mean, <laughs> why else do you think I have this place, you know, to begin with, is from the money I saved and, you know, the car I bought and all that kind of stuff. You know, that was all from money put away specifically for that reason. But the thing is, I'm not bringing in money like I used to anymore. In fact, at the time of this recording, I'm not bringing in any money, really. You know, I get, you know, a stipend from the GI Bill and stuff like that, and that's pretty much it, really. So, um, and yes, I am looking for a, a regular job, you know, don't misunderstand. You know, I am looking for, for employment, but the thing is, you know, making these YouTube videos and putting them out there and stuff like that is very time, you know, consuming. It's very, you know, like I said, just time consuming, you know, not only in recording the videos, and I've done multiple takes of this one already, so, you know, I sit down and do the video and like, oh, the camera's overheating, shit, you know, and I gotta redo it. So that's more time lost in making a video, and not only after I get the, the perfect take or the close enough take, whatever it takes, <laughs> um, I have to sit down, I have to edit it, I have to sync up the audio, because I'm also using a mic, so that takes more time. And I gotta tweak and peek, you know, make sure there's not too many ums and ahs and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and you know, in addition to that, you know, once it's all done, I gotta render it. And then once it's done rendering, upload it. And I gotta, you know, put in the right tags. I gotta adjust the description. Then once it's all done, you know, schedule it. And then, you know, make sure all the, you know, the text and everything like that is right. So that way when it goes live, you know, when it's sent out to Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that, you guys know it's a, a new video or, and something interesting to watch, hopefully. <laughs> I like to think it is. Anyway, excuse me. So um, with all that said, and over the years I've gotten a lot more efficient with making videos, so there's a lot less time lost in me making videos, but the thing is, you know, I can only do so much. I can only whittle down uh, so many different steps and it's just you know it's come to a point where you know I kind of feel like I should get some return on investment of my time with these videos because you know I've done them so much and they take up so much of my time and that could be time spent you know getting extra hours at a job or you know maybe taking an, an, an extra class at Western or something like that. So it's not me being greedy and, oh, Andy just wants some money because he wants to be a, a you know, big, fat, rich YouTube star. Mm. You know, it's just, you know, I, <laughs> I've been doing these videos for almost 10 years now, which we'll get to in a bit. And I just want some return on return of investment on making these videos and then you know, the plan is hopefully as time goes on and, you know, <laughs> I'm planning on, you know, getting more views and stuff like that and as, you know, more money from YouTube comes in, I can begin to um, break apart, you know, other time consuming things, you know, like a job, you know, once, once the YouTube income starts becoming large enough to where I don't have to work a part time job anymore, then that will give me, I'll be able to allocate the time that I used to spend on a job to making more videos, which means, you know, better quality videos, more videos, hopefully, <laughs> and stuff like that. So, you know, don't think it's me being selfish and, you know, I just want to party in my yacht and, you know, take trips to Japan or some crazy thing like that. You know, it's just, there's a bit of reality in here. And yes, I realize that, you know, maybe, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, m the money that I earn on YouTube won't be enough to cover a part-time job or anything like that. You know, that, that is possible. 
but you know, <laughs> I still want to give it the old college try, right? I mean, I am in college now, so hey, why the hell not? <laughs> so just, you know, don't misunderstand me and think I'm just being all greedy and just doing it for the money or whatever. So anyway, <clears throat> so aside from that uh, announcement, and as far as when the actual switchover will go, um, I don't have a definitive date set yet because you know, I have a huge back catalog of videos and I'm uploading a lot of them right now, but in addition to uploading them, I also have to, you know, put in the text and the tags and all that kind of stuff from the old videos. And it's just a, a big to do as far as, you know, moving channels over. So it's gonna take some time, but, um, the tentative date is March 1st of 2016, which is my official 10 year anniversary on YouTube on my Andy San channel. So uh, I figure, you know, what better way to, uh, to begin a new channel than uh, to do it on the uh, anniversary of the old channel. So um, yeah, I just thought that was kind of a cool idea. But again, it depends on you know, how fast I can get the videos up how fast I can get all that stuff ready. So, you know, if anything changes, I'll be sure to let you guys know in a future update, but that's that's the, the plan going forward for now. So, um, in addition to that, the other big YouTube announcement that I wanna make is the, the, the restart of my Andy Cade channel, which is my Let's Play channel. And um, <clears throat> I also have a link to that below in the booby de boops in the description of all my videos pretty much. Yeah, with uh, with Andy Cade, um, I originally started it as just kind of a Let's Play channel, but the, the thing is, I didn't realize just how much time went into making Let's Play videos. Like, you know, watch I watch a lot of Let's Players, and I, you know, kind of watched a lot of their behind the scenes videos and stuff like that, and a lot of them were like, oh, you know, Let's Plays take so much time, because you gotta set aside time to record, and then time to edit and render and all that kind of stuff, and I'm like, I can fucking do it, it's not that hard. You know, I've been making videos for a long time, it's not that hard. But um, the reality is that <laughs> it's, well, it's not that the process is difficult, it's that there's a lot of, you know, moving parts involved with it. You know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and uh, I've seen a lot of things go wrong with my, you know, recent-ish attempts at doing Let's Plays. And so I had a lot of uh, technical problems, basically with uh, my capture equipment, getting everything all synced up, and uh, it's just been, you know, a lot of trial and error with, uh, with making Let's Play videos. But, uh, you know, I'm, I want to give it another try. Um, I really like doing Let's Play videos, it's just they're a little more time intensive and there's a lot more involved to uh, editing them than my normal videos, where it's pretty cut and dry, you know, just sync up the two uh, audio tracks, do a little tweaking and peeking, and bam, video. <laughs> but uh, with Let's Plays, it's, it's a little bit more time intense and editing intense, I guess, you know. It's not that it's hard, it just takes more time, so. Um, a lot more moving parts involved, like I said. Uh, but I do wanna give it another try, and I've already recorded uh, two weeks worth of sessions at the time of this recording. So um, the plan going forward with Andy Cade is that I plan on officially relaunching the channel on February, the beginning of February, so February 1st, 2016. Be sure to mark that on your calendars. That's when the, uh, the first Andy Cade video you know, goes up. And the plan is to release one video every day and uh, do like a new game every week. And I do plan on like revisiting games, you know, if I really enjoyed a game or something like that and I wanna go back to it and maybe continue the playthrough, you know, definitely wanna do that as well. But again, since I'm only doing one video a day, um, it, it would behoove me to uh, include some variety in my videos. So I figured just doing like one solid game a week, you know, pretty simple and you know, like I said before with the whole, you know, once the YouTube money starts coming in, I can out reallocate time, you know, that was formerly spent on a job to making videos. You know, if the money starts coming in and starts getting to a point where, 
I can afford to make more videos, which is, it is what it is, then I want to upgrade it to like, you know, two videos a day. So, um, but for now, just, you know, one video a day, one new game a week, and uh, possible revisiting of series, and uh, stuff like that. So, the official launch date, relaunch date, I should say, of Andycade is February 1st, 2016. So be sure to tune in for that. And um, that's pretty much it on the whole YouTube front. Uh, now getting into personal life stuff, which we're uh, pretty far into the video for this, but you know, thanks for tuning in for this long. So uh, as far as personal life stuff goes, um, as you guys know, I moved from uh, my parents' place in Salina, Ohio to out here in Portage, Michigan, which is a suburb of Kalamazoo, Michigan. So I'm officially starting in school at uh, Western Michigan University. My first week was last week at the time of this recording. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been a while since I've been in, in college as a student. Uh, the last time I was in college was at Urbana University at uh, Urbana, Ohio, and that was from uh, 2006 to 2007. So <laughs> it's kind of funny because it, it's, it's right along the same time that I started YouTube. And actually my, my very first YouTube video that I was in was at Urbana University. It was me and my friend Eric, also known as a Talking with Dawkin. Uh, we got really drunk one night and um, he had a camera. I didn't have one at the time. So I asked if you know we could record just a short little video of me playing piano, and I wanted to upload it to the site called YouTube. He's like, "What's YouTube?" Because like YouTube was a, a new thing at the time, and I just wanted to upload something just to show to people and be like, <laughs> "Check it out, I'm playing piano. It's pretty cool, huh?" <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, he recorded me doing like a little less than a minute clip because you know he didn't have. Uh, a very big memory card so he could only you know record one minute clips at a time and uh, you know we just did some of that um, I did a little uh, guitar solo <laughs> in my dorm room uh, a couple days later and uh, it was it's pretty bad you know don't get me wrong it's it's terrible but you know I did it and it's my start on YouTube but uh, anyway I'm I, I, I digress so um, anyway going Moving forward almost 10 years, you know, since I was in college last, you know, going to Western, there's a lot of differences between Western and Urbana University. And uh, one of the big differences is size, you know, the size of the campus, the size of the student body, and just all that kind of stuff. You know, with Urbana, Urbana was, well, is, <laughs> it hasn't changed much over the years, but Urbana University is a much smaller campus. Urbana, Ohio is roughly the same size as my hometown of Salina, so maybe like a little bit bigger, but it's roughly the same size, amount of people, stuff like that. Um, so going from Salina to Urbana was pretty easy because, you know, I was used to that amount of people in town. But compare that to, you know, Portage slash Kalamazoo, that whole area near Battle Creek and stuff like that. Uh, it's just massive and there's a lot of people and uh, the infamous Michigan drivers are plenty out here, let me tell you. These, out of all the places I've been to, you know, not only in the world, but in America alone, I gotta say, out of every place I've been to, uh, Michigan has the craziest drivers. Just fucking nuts. And um, the only way to really combat that is to become that, you know. So I've, I've learned to become a much more aggressive driver, you know, instead of, you know, just kind of, you know, clicking the turn signal, waiting like a click or two before actually turning and just kind of slowly turning into the lane just so that way, you know, people aren't freaking out, you know. I'm a lot quicker at stuff like that and, uh, which kind of leads me into my next point. Um, the differences between Cal between going to Western versus Urbana is driving. Um, when I was going to Urbana, I didn't have my car. I had to give it up because, you know, I didn't have a full-time job, so I wasn't able to afford it anymore. So it got repoed, 
it is what it is, but um, yeah, so I didn't have a vehicle of my own. I had to bum rides from friends and stuff like that to get around, or just hop on my own two feet and uh, just do it, or get my bike, which I, I later got at the next semester was my bike. Um, but yeah, now that I got my, my car, I have a lot more freedom, stuff like that, and I'm commuting to campus for, versus, you know, living in the dorms like I did at uh, Urbana, so um, it has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, one of the advantages of living in the dorms and living very close to campus is that, again, you're closer to campus. You have a much more intimate connection with uh, not only the campus, but the students and stuff like that. So um, it's a lot easier to connect with them as friends or, you know, one night stands or whatever. I don't know. You know, stuff like that versus you know a commuter where you basically it's it's pretty cut and dry you know you go to school you have a little chuckle with your friends and stuff like that and then you come back home and that's it you know so you know it kind of reminds me of when I was going to ITT Tech except you know it's a lot closer so when I was going to ITT Tech it, I was basically just commuting like I never lived in the area I never lived close to campus or anything like that I would basically just go there twice sometimes three times a week you know, go through my classes, do my homework, all that kind of stuff, and then, you know, head back to Salina. So it's kind of like that. And I think, you know, one of the things I've noticed over the years is that, you know, I think if I was uh, younger, more closer to the, you know, college age, you know, the typical college age of like 18 to 21, 22, I think I would enjoy living closer to campus more because I'd be around the environment and you know, I'd be closer to parties and I wouldn't have to worry about, ah, oh, shit, who's gonna drive me home? I'm so fucking drunk, you know? It's not, not like in Japan where you can just hop on a train and go home that way, you know, no matter how smashed you are. You know, in America, it's all about, oh, you gotta find a car, or, you know, depending on how big a city you, you're in, like a cab or, I mean, now they got like Uber and Lyft and stuff like that, but even that, even still, it's like, it's extra money, you know? that you may or may not have from doing all the drinking and stuff. So, you know, you, you gotta plan it more accordingly. But the thing is, like, I think as I'm getting older, I'm starting to appreciate uh, just, uh, like, my own me time, basically. Like, you know, I go to college, and it's college time. You know, it's time to, you know, take notes, uh, do homework. You know, I'm a lot more serious about this whole college thing now versus then where I was a little more unsure of myself. And then when I come home, it's me time, you know? It's just me booping around in fucking PJs. You know, I can wear pajama pants and, you know, dick around or whatever, you know, just goof around on YouTube, make soup. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash theandysan, you'll know I, I like to make a lot of crockpot stuff and put it up on, on Instagram. And uh, I might make uh, recipe videos eventually once I uh, get the hang of it and I actually tried doing that when I was living out in Yokosuka but uh, the reason I didn't put it up was uh, one of my roommates when he cooked something he left like a little splatter from like the grease and uh, I didn't clean it up and so like I have my camera kind of tilted because of, it was on like a little mini tripod and it was supposed to focus on like me cutting up vegetables or some, something like that. And I was looking at the footage and it, the, the camera wasn't focused on you know me cutting the vegetables. It was focused on like the gnats crawling around the walls and stuff like that. Cause you know, I would buy bananas and stuff like that for the morning and you know, just gnats, fucking gnats. So it made the kitchen look just a lot grosser than it was. It, it wasn't really that gross, but the way the video made it look, it looked like I was, you know, in fucking some slumlord kitchen, you know, just chopping up carrots and potatoes and stuff like that, just flies and gnats and all kinds of shit crawling around. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this video. <laughs> but um, I've learned from my mistakes, so I might do some recipe videos depending on, again, time and, you know, just, <laughs> I like to experiment a lot, so. You know, it's not necessarily like, you know, oh, this is the definitive recipe of how I do things. You know, it's a lot of trial and error and stuff like that. Because I'm still learning, you know, 
how to cook, <laughs> you know. But uh, anyway, I've, I think I've I think I've prattled on long enough. But uh, anyway, the whole point of you know the, the whole gist, I guess, of me going back to Western, and I, I might make a uh, a dedicated video to this, like the differences between you know me going to college now versus then and stuff like that. But the whole point of it is this: is that um, I did have some difficulty adjusting, you know, mostly just because I didn't know where a lot of my classes were. The campus is a lot bigger than the ones that I'm used to where, yeah, I did get lost at Urbana, but there's a, <laughs> the campus is a lot smaller, so it's easier to kind of, you know, through trial and error, figure out where your class is, you know, versus Western, where a lot of the buildings look, look similar, or they sometimes straight up look alike. And uh, you think you're going to your to the building where your class is in, but it's actually a building all the way across campus that kind of looks like it. So you know, <laughs> but I think I got a handle on it now. So hopefully that won't be uh, an issue going forward. Uh, and as far as like the schoolwork and stuff like that goes, so right now at the time of this recording, for this semester anyway, um, I'm taking only four courses. Uh, I might be doing more later on. But uh, I wanted to uh, kind of take it easy the first semester because I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know, like, not only how hard they, the classes would be, but like how much homework, how much time I would have to dedicate towards doing classes and stuff like that. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, you know, test the waters, I guess, and not overload myself with, uh, with classes. So I just picked four. So I got uh, principles of accounting, uh, sociology class, uh, a, I say I already said accounting, uh, economics, basic, I think it's like micro or macro, I think it's micro economics, and then uh, basic Japanese, so Japanese 101. And uh, I know a lot of you guys are like, Andy, why are you taking Japanese? You lived over, over two years in Japan, what's the point? You know, shouldn't you be like para para at the Nihongo? <laughs> Well, that's not exactly true. Um, the reality is that um, while I do know a lot of Japanese, I don't know a good amount of Japanese, at least for like conversational level. Like I know enough to kind of get by and to order food and like basic survival Japanese and, and in addition like a couple interesting phrases to kind of, you know, make the locals heads turn like, eh, foreigner, foreigner knows that word, huh, strange. <laughs> So, uh, but as far as like conversational level, like I'm just a complete caveman. Like me am Andy, me am American, up, 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 you know. So I wanted to improve my uh, conversational level Japanese, as well as, you know, just uh, keep that part uh, strong, I guess, because you do end up forgetting some things over time as you're not in the environment anymore. So, and I don't exactly have a lot of Japanese uh, people around me, at least near, not nearly as much as I did back in Yokosuka. So, you know, there's no, there's not as much practical application out here versus there. So I just wanted to keep my skills sharp, uh, hopefully improve upon my skills, and actually uh, one of the major reasons was so I could learn to read and write in Japanese, you know, hiragana, katakana, kanji, all that kind of stuff. Because, uh, I mean, I only know at, you know, before the class, I only knew a couple characters, you know, mostly like train stations and stuff like that. So that way, you know, if I get lost, at least I'd kind of know where they were. And yes, I know a lot of the train stations, they have English names, but, you know, it's a lot easier to know what station you're at if you kind of know the kanji for at least some of the major ones, you know, like Shinagawa, Yokohama, Tokyo, stuff like that, you know. Just <laughs> Yokosuka Chuo, you know, the station that I used to get off for home, Horonochi. So, yeah. Um, and also, I know a lot of you guys, you know, <laughs> this is kind of late in the video to be saying this, but uh, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me, well, Andy, don't you ever have plans to come back to Japan, either as like a, a study abroad, or maybe like when you graduate, you know, come back, teach a little bit of the English to the kids, you know, stuff like that. And um, I don't have any plans set as of yet, as at the time it's recording anyway. 
but um, one of the things I do want to do uh, before I graduate is do a study abroad program back in Japan. And Western is actually very well noted for its extensive uh, study abroad programs. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because uh, the one of my YouTube heroes and inspirations, I guess, uh, the late, great Roger Swan, actually went to Western. And that's how he was able to come over to Tokyo to film the Tokyo Swan series. Um, because he, he went over on a study abroad program to Keio University. And they still offer that program at Western. So um, that is a very big possibility that I could be, you know, going to Keio University. But again, you know, on the other hand, uh, I've already been to Tokyo. I've already experienced that part of Japan. And uh, while it would be nice to see a lot of my, you know, Tokyo-based friends again and hang out with them and, you know, go to all the cool places we used to go to and, you know, maybe even revisit Yokosuka at some point. Um, the thing is, it, it would pretty much just be like a case of been there, done that. So, you know, as much as I want to go back to Tokyo and, you know, actually live there instead of, you know, commute to there to visit everybody, um, I feel like I would just be, you know, rehashing a lot of old experiences. So, um, Western also has a bunch of other schools that I could potentially go to, which seem a little more interesting. So, the ones that stick out in my mind, aside from Keio in Tokyo, is uh, there's a couple, or at least there's one in Kyoto, which um, I've really wanted to visit Kyoto. I've never been out that way before, I've never been to the Kansai region. And I think it'd be really interesting to uh, see how they do things over there. And to, of course, you know, see all the temples and see all like old Japan and stuff like that. Now I know a lot of people that come over to Japan are kind of enamored with like the old Japan, you know, the rice patties and the geisha and samurai and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I think that stuff's cool too, don't get me wrong. But like, I, that wasn't the reason why I wanted to go over to Japan. You know, it was a lot of the, the newer, more modern stuff about Japan that I, I was interested in. And yes, you know, <laughs> oh my god, Andy's such a weeaboo, you know, like in the anime and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, don't judge me. But yeah, yeah, anime is one of the reasons why I wanted to go over j to Japan. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it'd be kind of nice to see, you know, old school Japan and just to get to see a, a, another part of Japan, a place I've never been to before. And, you know, in addition to temples and all that kind of stuff, Kyoto has a lot of great landscapes, which, as a photographer, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of stuff like that. That's, that's my bread and butter, baby, <laughs> you know? So, um, it'd be really interesting to see something like that. And I've also wanted to explore southern Japan a bit more, because I got a little taste, you know, while I was in the Navy, and we visit, like, Sasebo, you know, further south, and I went to Hiroshima and Miyajima and stuff like that, and it's just beautiful out there. And, you know, I really want to visit that part of Japan as well, so I'm also looking into uh, scholarships for that area, but it's a little bit, a little scant, at least from what I've seen so far. Um, but uh, in addition to, you know, Keio and going out to universities in Kyoto, uh, they also have a unique opportunity, opportunity to go to a university near Sapporo, which is in Hokkaido, which is the northern island, uh, the northernmost island of Japan, which is very cold. <laughs> a lot of winter storms and stuff like that. But again, it's an interesting part of Japan, and I don't know too many people that have not only been up there, but actually live there. I don't, you know, I I'm sure there's J vloggers that uh, do those kind of videos up there, but most of them are just, you know, either visiting doing the touristy thing, you know, just for like an ice festival or something like that, but I don't know too many people, at least not on the foreigner circuit, that live up there. So I think, you know, for my money, I would find that extremely, extremely interesting. And to see how the northern Japan, the northern Japanese people do things, and I'm sure they have a lot of great food up there as well. Um, Hokkaido's known for a lot of great seafood, uh, bear stew, you know, 
stuff like that. So I think that'd be really cool, no pun intended, <laughs> to see that as well. So uh, there's, there's so many different uh, opportunities and options for me as far as that goes. But the thing is, I'm not going to be able to um, do any of those study abroad programs, at least definitely not this semester because everything's already set in stone and not next semester either because, you know, I want to uh, just kind of get myself established, kind of get used to the area as far as that goes. And uh, I'm planning on, you know, sometime next year in, tw in 2017 to do a study abroad program. That's the plan going forward anyway because there's a lot of uh, different you know, academic requirements that need to happen first before I hop on the plane and go back to Japan, you know, so. And again, this is all just kind of ideas and stuff like that, and you know, it may or may not happen. Like I said, nothing's set in stone, but um, that's the plan going forward as far as that goes. So I think I've rambled on long enough in this video. If you're still tuning in uh, here at the end, you know, I gotta thank you. You the real MVP, not me. <laughs> So anyway, with that said, this is the Andy Song. Sign up for now. Thanking you guys boop, for tuning in to this long, rambly ass update video that's been long overdue. Again, apologies for that. And uh, for watching my other stuff. And I hope you guys tune in when I switch the channel over to my The Andy Song account. And I hope you guys tune in to my new Let's Play channel, the relaunching of my Let's Play channel, Andy Cade at the beginning of February of this year. And uh, I want to thank you guys for watching my other stuff. Also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, sending your friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.